Hey everyone, I'm Nate Fisher. And I'm Dennis Stack. And we are Cinema Boss bringing you the review for Independence Day Resurgence. Dennis, what did you, uh, let's start us off. What'd you think? Uh, well, going into this, you know, I had uh, like moderate expectations. I do love the first Independence Day. In so fact, do I. Yeah. In our last Strongest Weakest, we both uh, talked about how much we love the original. Yep. But, you know, it's just that I think that when we got these like decade plus sequels, yeah. they never really turn out any good. I agree. It's they, been a little too long. Right. They have a poor history. Yeah. And, like, fan retention isn't usually there. You know, I feel like they're just trying to rehash some of that. Sure. And I felt that with this movie a little bit. Okay. There were moments that I felt like they were just trying to recreate from the first one. Yes. It didn't quite hit as well as the original. First of all, the cast have all aged very well. They yeah. all look pretty good. Yeah. Actually, some of them, I was like, it seems like there was no time to pass at all. That scientist guy with the gray hair. No oh, Brett Spiner? All. Yeah. He looks oh, exactly he looks the exactly the same as he did in the first one. Super song. weird. Oh, um, yeah. uh, I also thought that the comic relief worked really well also. Yeah, there, think, were, uh, there were a few characters who played the comic relief role, but they, they were good. Like, you know, they made me laugh, and they brought a little bit of light to, you know, the very dark and heavy, you know, story and, you know, plot and everything. Right. So uh, let's get into the plot. Sure. Yeah, let's rabbit. get into the plot. Um, very similar to the first. Very similar. I mean, aliens evade, humans fight back. I mean, right. what else are you going to get? I think that the movie suffers a little bit because we've seen such scope since the first Independence Day movie came out. We've seen all these alien movies, blockbuster movies, with such large global scope. And I feel like Independence Day really uh, did it, not first, but really did it very well. Where I right. felt this menacing presence where I was like, these ships are so humongous and they're taking up countries. And, and this one just doesn't feel as large as the first one did. Um, I think that's unavoidable in the world of movies that we live in right now, though. Exactly. I mean, there was some spectacle to it. I mean, there, it was bigger and better, just like, yeah. you know, any sequel tries to go for. Yeah. But at the same time, I think that, you're right, some of the impact from that, like, epic, world-ending thing, because, you know, all the big event movies, that's what the stakes are at. The world's going to end, so... Right. I feel like, at the same time, the movie's kind of copying off its original... But it feels that way because so many other movies have copied off the original right. by having these huge stakes. I kind of like that they copied off the original. I like this sort of had a 90s blockbuster tone to me. It, it went did. in there and it had this sort of like big epic feel. There's general plot points that are easy to follow, which I, I was okay with. I mean, I'm giving you a warning right now. When you go to this movie, just say to yourself, say to your friends, turn your brain off. Just right. turn it off. You don't have to examine these plots very thoroughly because they're just not that they're, they're riddled with holes i mean there's logic All loops the but who cares but right who cares it's fun uh surprisingly to me i felt like this movie excelled more than suffered without will smith i'm glad will smith wasn't in this movie yeah it didn't need will smith yeah, at all it, i didn't i didn't feel his absence or felt like there's something missing and it's will smith from this movie there are some set pieces where such as they land on the alien ship and they're like it has its own ecosystem and i was like sweet they yeah. didn't explore that enough for yeah, me. I kinda... thought it was a really cool set piece that they had, and they were there for like three minutes. And yeah, I was a little really... bummed out. I thought that could have been cool. Yeah, I was like, it was a swamp on their ship. That's what it yeah. looked like. You yeah. know, I thought they could have explored that further. And the third act was a little long. Third act was a little long. But, but the rest of the movie was brisk enough. Like, they got there quick enough to where the third act didn't feel as long as it does in other movies. I have to applaud it just for handling so many characters. Um, you don't necessarily care a lot about the characters, but you also don't disregard them very much either. No, I feel like they no. handled it where they give these people these little moments, these little reasons for why they're doing it, and you believe it, and you move on with the plot. So right. there was a lot of characters, but I never felt like it was too bloated. Yeah, and then, you know, and you know, with most of these characters, you know, they're not compelling, you know, or intriguing no, or anything. I mean, like, you know, Liam Hensworth, he plays the hero, punk. the He's rebel, punk, yeah. you know. I mean, he has go some against... good comic relief, though. Well, yeah, yeah, he has great, some good snappy comedy liners in there. In there. Yeah. yeah, and I feel like. Uh, just like with some of the things though, like, you know, like Vivica A. Fox bringing her back, she was like gone as soon as she came. Like, I felt like they could have just cut that out totally entirely. But I, I really liked uh, Bill Pullman, like how yeah. President Whitmore and like what he yeah. went through since. He's a I thought cuckoo. That was, I like that. Yeah, I like that too. And I like how he's all grizzled looking. And yeah, I thought that was good. It didn't give me the uh, stand up and cheer moment like Independence Day did. Right. I and, mean, and I would say that that would be a, a kind of a gripe. Like, how he starts off having a conversation with Jeff Goldblum, then it turns into like the recreation of the speech. Yeah, it's like he's talking to him, and yeah, everybody listen now. Like that was just kind of like forced. I felt I wouldn't say I didn't personally do this, but Nate confided in me that he stood up and saluted 
the first time around in Independence Day when Bill Pullman gave that speech. Yeah. So I can fight it. <laughs> but uh, I was in fifth grade. Yeah. So my yeah, we did it three times. Decision. All three times we saw in the original. Movie, so, um, but having said all of that, Dennis, why don't you uh, put a number on it for us first? Um, yeah. Like I said, I mean, it's good fun. You know, but it's not a great movie by any means. But it's serviceable. It's good popcorn movie. It's good time. Uh, not as bad as a six, but not as good as a seven. So I'm gonna go in the middle. It's six point five. Out okay. Of 10. All right. Which is passable. Yeah, yeah. No, um, it's a good time. Go see it. Yeah, and I'm giving it a seven. I'm, okay. I'm right there with you. I thought that I was never bored at all. And, uh, yeah, there was certain spectacles that I was, like, I was smiling through it. And yeah. I was having a good time. So, uh, you know, take take the kids, take the family. You'll all enjoy it. I think right. it's a good movie. Just turn your brain off, eat some popcorn. Buh. All right, everyone, there you have it. There's our review for Independence Day Resurgence. What did you guys all think of the movie? Please be sure to leave your comments below. And also, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We truly appreciate all the support. Um, next week, we'll be taking a short break for the 4th of July weekend, but we will be back the following week with a new review. We also have lots of fun stuff coming up this summer with new skits, segments, and, of course, more reviews for everybody. So thanks again for tuning in. And remember, there's no place like the theater.